As I promised in my last policy address on the last Sunday of March 2021, I am here today to outline my administration's policies on mining, as well as our roster of programs related to the sector. As you all know, for a long time, our economy has depended largely on rain-fed agriculture, with our mining sector contributing little to our revenue, less than 3%, in fact. However, I believe that mining has the potential to be a long-term game changer for our economy. When the founders of Malawi said that, Jumajidimtaka, it was assumed that this means our country's only wealth is our fertile soil and its potential for crop production. We now know that this view is incorrect. We now know that there is more wealth in our land than meets the eye, a wealth of untapped mineral capital. I stand before you today to say that the time has come to restructure our country's monolithic agro-based economy. Although our pursuit of agro-based economic activities will continue, our approach is to do so in a manner that allows other sectors, like mining, to add value to it. I am therefore determined to kickstart that process by using mining as a catalyst for restructuring the economy. Mind you, I'm not talking about spending the proceeds from mining on consumption, as if the minerals in our land belong to our generation alone. No, what I'm talking about is converting our mineral capital into development capital that benefits all Malawians for generations to come. What I'm talking about is leveraging mining to reduce Malawi's vulnerability to external shocks and to raise the living standards of our people. What I'm talking about is using mining as a foreign exchange generator and a key factor in both our job and wealth creation strategies. What I'm talking about is using mining as a launch pad for our industrialization agenda. For example, our deposits of phosphate can be used to create a fertilizer production industry, which will in turn add value to both our agriculture industry and our exports. Similarly, our deposits of heavy sands can be used to create glass manufacturing companies, which will in turn impact our infrastructure development. In other words, if we do the right things and do things right, our mining sector can transform every other sector we have and facilitate the creation of a new Malawi as envisioned in Malawi 2063, where mining is linked to industry under pillar number two of our national agenda. In the context of this agenda, it is important for us as a nation to be the ones to determine the right things to do and to do things right with our own mining sector. Failing to do so would result in a repeat of the negative exploitation past administrations allowed to happen at places like Kairikera, uranium mine in Karonga. Although the Karakira sandstone uranium deposit was discovered during Malawi's first presidency in 1982, six presidencies later, our country has nothing developmental to show for it. Not even in the Karakira community itself. 
As a country, we have issued over 250 mining licenses, but we still have no proper mining industry or returns to speak of. This is a crime we cannot allow to happen again. Nor can we allow our mining sector in general to be uh, the unstructured, exploitative, and lawless free for all it has been in recent years. You are all aware that recently there have been increasing reports of unregulated mining in this country, including the illegal selling and smuggling of such natural resources as gold and gemstones. This cannot continue because not only are unregulated mining activities a threat to our national security, but they perpetuate Africa's legacy of allowing unscrupulous external traders to exploit our people. In view of the chaotic status of the mining sector in recent times, my administration's top priority when I took office 10 months ago was to bring order and sanity to the sector. My first order of business was to establish the Ministry of Mining as a standalone ministry that would formulate policies and regulations to organize the sector. Through this ministry, my administration has been working on a regulatory framework within which all transactions in this sector will take place. Today, I'm happy to announce four major outcomes of the work we have been doing. Number one, in the June sitting of Parliament, my administration will present a bill to establish a mining regulator authority. The authority's mandate will be to regulate the development, management, and utilization of our country's mineral resources in line with sustainable development principles and practices. The authority will execute its regulatory mandate by fulfilling the following functions. One, receiving and processing mineral tenement applications. Two, granting, withholding, suspending, and revoking mineral licenses. Three, monitoring and enforcing the compliance of licensees with the provisions of both the new Mining Regulator Act and the Mines and Minerals Act, including compliance with guidelines for protecting the environment in conjunction with the relevant authorities. For establishing, updating, and maintaining a web-based and publicly accessible mining cadastre. Five, reorganizing and formalizing the artisanal and small-scale mining subsector to foster orderliness. Six, settling disputes between mineral tenement applicants, holders, and communities in consultation with other relevant authorities. And seven, conducting mine surveying and mineral auditing in line with international standards. In readiness for the regulatory work to be done by the mining authority, the Minister of Mining has already engaged the Malawi Police Service on the best way the two institutions can work together in curbing illegal mining and smuggling of our country's minerals. In fact, I call on all governance institutions and oversight bodies, including border patrol and control agencies, to examine and execute the mandate the law gives them in ensuring that our natural uh, treasures never get stolen with impunity. And crucially, all of you as citizens must remain watchful against illegal activities and report incidents thereof to the police. The security of our national treasures demands national vigilance. The second point is that the second major outcome of the work that has been done in the establishment of the National Mining Company, a state-owned enterprise that will promote the development of the mining sector. That is in the works.
Its functions will include catalyzing private sector investment into the mining sector, acting as the government's agent for the administration of its equity interest in mining operations, maximizing national benefits through go it alone or partnership investments into the management of strategic minerals, promoting in-country beneficiation and downstream processing of minerals, including mineral value addition, providing expert technical advice to the government to support negotiations related to any mining development agreement, and lastly, serving as a vehicle for pooling financial resources to bankroll local investment into the mining sector. Our next step with the National Mining Company will be to capitalize and operationalize it, which the Minister of Mining will inform you about it in due course. I'm therefore directing the Minister of Finance to begin taking steps in that direction during this upcoming financial year. Another component you can expect the ministry to announce is what will be the working relationship between the National Mining Company and the mining cooperatives. We are urging those of you in the sector to form and register. Third major outcome of the work that has been done to organize the mining sector is the operationalization of the central bank's function as a structural market for our minerals. As I speak, the Reserve Bank of Malawi has already started implementing my directive to start buying gold from artisanal miners as mandated by its Act of Parliament of 2018. That Act empowers the Reserve Bank to be the sole institution to purchase, sell, or hold gold in Malawi, and we are serious about this enforcement. To do this in an orderly fashion, I'm directing the Reserve Bank to engage the public in general, and miners in particular, with guidance and information on the action plan it has already developed to operate trading centers for gold in different parts of the country in line with that law. Additionally, I am directing the central bank to establish a structured market for the purchase of other minerals beyond gold and inform the public about the same. Fourthly, in the 2021-2022 financial year, my administration will fund the development of infrastructure and the develop deployment of experts critical to the management of the mining sector. On the infrastructural side, we will complete the construction and equipment of a state-of-the-art laboratory complex at Area 4, which is estimated to cost 820 million kwacha. On the other expertise side, as part of the human capital development for this sector, we will employ mining inspectors, geologists, and engineers to respond to technical issues arising from mining activities in mineral hot districts like Karonga, Rumpim, Zimba, Kota Kota, Kasungu, Balaka, Machinga, and Mangochi. Additionally, we will be recruiting mineral economists and mining lawyers to deal with production sharing agreements and mineral development agreements in a manner that does not leave Malawi holding the short end of the stick. In this regard, I'm instructing the Secretary to the President and Cabinet to work with the Minister of Mining to expedite the recruitment of mining experts who are just idle. I'm also committing my administration to the training of additional expertise for this sector. Fellow Malawians, let me close with this. Malawi is a mineral-rich country. What we have lacked for decades is the patriotism 
leadership, discipline, organization, and collaboration to blend the natural resources under our feet with our human resources to create the developmental riches that will last and serve generations. But the era of economic mismanagement is over. With your help, cooperation, and trust, we will turn our God-given resources into roads, schools, hospitals, parks, sports facilities, bridges, universities, pavements, apartment blocks, hotels, and excellent services over the next two decades. With your help, cooperation, and trust, we will turn our mineral capital into development capital. In my view, this is the only way to ensure that the minerals we have in this country are treated not like riches we have inherited from our forebears, but as riches we have borrowed from our children. God bless you for your attention, and God bless my life.